Brett Okamoto from ESPN alongside Conor McGregor's head coach, John Kavanaugh. Big fight, UFC 264 coming up, the trilogy with Dustin Poirier. And the first thing, John, is I got to admit, I, I was starting to wonder if I was going to get to talk to you this week. You guys have been very quiet. I, why, why is that? Was there a reason that you guys have kind of shied away from the media a little bit? Um, we just wanted to keep everything on the wraps. Um, yeah, we, we're taking this one very serious. It's, it's an interesting one from a coaching point of view. It's a you know trilogy. We've seen each other a lot. And uh, we just figured, you know, let's let's just keep all our cards close to our chest and everything will be shown on Saturday night. You just came off of a Conor McGregor press conference, which everybody loves, and I'm sure everyone will be dissecting it as you knowing him and, and at that press conference and then also just this week. You know, what, what have you been seeing out of, uh, out of Conor? Um, I feel like every answer is a, a cliche. Uh, he's focused, he's ready, training camp is perfect. Um, no, but it's I feel this one's a little bit different. Uh, we all came out here without our significant others. Um, the, the, the build up for the last one, we all had our families there and it was, um, you know, we trained as, as hard as we could, but I do think it's a little bit different when you decide to go away for months on end with nobody around except a bunch of men that try to bash each other in the gym every day, all day, and that's all we've been doing. And uh, so I'm looking forward to getting some feminine love from Orla and see, see my son next week, but it's been, brutal in parts and it's been um, I kind of joke saying we spent years trying to civilize them and then the last couple of months we turned them back into a caveman yeah. <laughs> no seeing the families will be nice after a business first and um, it wha wha do you think that just as a camp as a whole when you look back on the preparations for the second fight the, the fight in January did you make mistakes was just the mood too lax I mean when you look back having hindsight now were there problems in that camp or when you look at the result I wouldn't say lax or you know it was very hard work was put in. Um, an argument could be made a little bit boxing heavy with looking looking to the future rather than being prepared for an MMA fight. But but look, not going to dwell on it. Not going to start you know looking back and with hindsight trying to say what went right, what went wrong. A lot of things went right with it as well. It almost unbelievably, his punching power went up quite a bit mm -hmm. um, since then, and we hope to be able to show that on Saturday night yeah. better. Was there ever any part, uh, uh, you know, and, and then we'll move on to this fight, but with the last fight, y you're talking about Manny Pacquiao, and then, you know, Connor's saying that he wants to pat Dustin on the head. Was there any part of you that's like, man, he's not in the right mindset to go out and kill this guy? I mean, because, because as sportsmanship is important, but maybe were you ever concerned, I guess, that he was not in the right mindset for that fight? You know, I've been with Connor a while now, and he has a, his, his evolution is continuous, and he, you, we try different, he tries different approaches. And I feel he's gone back to the best approach now. It is reminiscent. He mentioned the Eddie fight in, in, in New York. And I feel the build-up for this has been similar to that one. Um, so I think you're going to see the best version of him. When you say that you've been um, taking some time to almost decivilize him and turn him back into an animal, so what is he like? What's he like to be around then in that, in that house when you when – that's, that's your goal? Yeah. Yeah, it's intense. Um, you know, it's funny, in the, in the lead-up to the last one, Probably a lot more of the sparring was done with boxing gloves and you know the full protection gear on. And for this one, no sparring has been done with boxing gloves. All of the sparring has been done with MMA gloves, mm -hmm. which, when you combine his power with you know the MMA gloves are a lot smaller, it's been a lot more brutal. Mm -hmm. I will say mm -hmm. we had to have a lot more sparring partners on ready to cycle through so as that we could get to the finish line. Um, so yeah, as an, as an MMA fan, first and foremost, I'm very excited to see all the nuances that come back with MMA only sparring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's certain hand fighting and, and positions you, you, you do that you just somewhat ignore when you're wearing boxing gloves a lot of the time. Right. So um, yeah, it's been very intense. And I would seem that, it, at least from what I know about Conor, is that he enjoys that stuff. You know, he enjoys when you start to add layers. Why do you think he got away from the MMA training, and he did fall in love with maybe boxing a little bit. Why do you think that happened? Well, I won't put words in another man's mouth. You'd have to be a question you'd have to ask him. Um, and again, I don't want to. I don't want to start now looking back and saying everything was wrong with that. That's yeah. very far from it. Mm -hmm. It was a very worthwhile uh, period of training. Um, but you know, this this is this is what. Uh, this is what this journey is about, as someone once said. It's about winning and learning, you know. So <laughs> we learned a lot from the last one, and we're going to win this time.
I got to ask you about leg kicks. You know, I mean, everyone was talking about the leg kicks right after the fight, and they're talking about it before this fight. You were the coach of Conor McGregor during this camp, and now, you know, this fight week. What were, what were your thoughts on the leg kicks in the first fight, and how have you addressed it going into this one? Yeah, it's, it, it was a great um, tactic by the guys. They, they, they had spotted something, and they exploited it, and, and well done, you know. But that's being solved. Mm -hmm. No more card tricks. It's, uh, it's down to just fighting now. Yeah. And um, I'll, I'll steal a line from Connor. If you want to see how we'll deal with them, they're going to have to pay for that. Yes. All right, last question. Um, you know, Connor, he's, he's so good at, at, um, at getting up there on stage and telling things that people want to hear. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, ah, the old Connor's back. You know, <laughs> and it, it does seem like, though, he is a guy who is focused, wants to get this, this loss back. And, and he's already talking about fighting Charles Oliveira. If you got a guy who's active and wants to win a championship, you know him best. Does this remind you of, of the old Connor? Is the old Connor back? <laughs> uh, the better Connor is, is here. And it's been a continuous process over a number of years at this stage. And it's, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of activity over the last number of years, which is, um, is what it is. But now here we are, and we had one just a couple of months ago. It's actually 24 weeks between number two and number three, which is the same as between Diaz one and Diaz two. Oh, exact same, exact same 24 that. weeks. So we saw what happened in that period of time between those two and to do it again, and then to have another one set up before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I feel he's peaking physically and mentally, um, just knocking on 33. So to get a couple of years of, you know, two, three fights per year, that would be the ideal. Yeah. situation ideal for the fans as well and uh, you've had some big nights here in las vegas we're looking forward to seeing you have another big one on saturday thank you john thank you Bill. thanks for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus